And it's time for our second hot topic. The Naira appreciation witness last week seemed to be short-lived as the currency resumed a fresh crisis this week. It traded around 890 to 910 to the dollar from 820 Naira that we saw it trade at last week. Well, that's what we want to take a look at right now. Frank Eliana, technology and media editor, Business Day, is our guest for this segment. Good morning to you, Frank. Yes, good morning. And it's always a, a, a pleasure being on the show. Always a pleasure having you, Frank. Let's go straight to brass tacks and find out why we're witnessing this fluctuation again. What is responsible uh, for this one we've experienced this week? Okay, so um, many things. Um, uh, let me just highlight, uh, say, um, two of it. One is... Uh, um, the money that the federal government uh, collected, that's the uh, $3 billion um, dollars that uh, the NNPC reportedly um, got um, to help uh, um, strengthen the Naira. I, I, many of us knew that it was going to be a short-term uh, um, measure to, um, to solve what appears to be a fundamental problem that Nigeria has. Um, it's not what what we're dealing with is beyond what we can just uh, throw money at. Um, but then the federal government felt like um, getting that money, the three billion dollars, could help um, in the interim to just uh, uh, um, reduce the inflation that the country was facing or the economy was facing. And it, it, it worked um, for the period that it worked, you know, but. Um, the demand in the market is much more than what $3 billion um, can solve, uh, which means that you have to go down to the fundamentals um, to address the real issues that we are having, which is that production is very low, uh, which is that the manufacturing sector isn't um, producing at the capacity that they're supposed to produce. And then also, um, the second uh, leg of that would be that investors um, haven't... Um, increased or grown their confidence in the economy. Um, they remain bearish, um, even with all the uh, reforms that the government has uh, churned out in recent times. Um, investors are not really convinced about the, um, the depth of these reforms because the reality on ground is different from what is on paper. And once that is the case, um, it is often very difficult for you to um, it, it convinces an investor to bring out money to to invest. Don't forget that many of them are there for for the long term, and then there are also those who are portfolio investors. They just want to take um, put in money and take it out, uh, uh, um, but they have to be assured that there is an exit for their money, even if it stays um, in your economy, say for like three or four or seven years. You know, but they need to see a clear roadmap that this is what is going to happen to the investment that they have made and this is how much all the earnings on on the investment so that is what we're facing currently um yeah so far okay so let's look at the distortionary effect of this exchange rate volatility uh, this relentless gyrations as we see it can deter fdi can't it absolutely yes it, um it, it will definitely uh, um, not help the FDI that we're trying to attract, you know, and F FDI is also a function of uh, investors' confidence, investors coming into your economy. Um, if they are able to bring in money, that's when you're earning um, foreign direct investment. Also, FDI can also be um, from your manufacturers, from your local local economy or your local um, industries um, being able to export um, their produce um, at the international level and then earning um, revenue from those exports that they've made. Um, so far, we haven't, we haven't increased our export ratio. Um, much of the things that we, that we still use, much of the things that we still um, sell in the market are all imported, um, say uh, about 80% of them, you know, so we are import dependent still. And uh, that 
hasn't yet been addressed by the government. And so uh, um, it, it's, it's difficult for us to earn foreign direct investment at the level that we expect to and at the level that will help the economy to, um, or at the level that will impact the inflation that we're currently facing. So, yeah, I'm definitely FDI is going to be affected. So uh, um, that's exactly what um, is happening. What's your assessment of the CBN's intervention? The gap between uh, the official rate and the black uh, exchange rate is still giving them a headache, as it appears. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely right. I, I think today's story on Business Day, we heard um, that the parallel market were buying dollars at uh, 895 Naira and selling at uh, 905. Um, that's uh, according to data from uh, Aboki FX, you know, and if you counteract that with the data that um, the CBN has, which is uh, about uh, 800 and uh, uh, um, lower than that, you know, um, almost 80 Naira um, difference, you, you, you see that arbitrage is uh, continuing to um, to manifest, you know, despite efforts by the CBN to to rein it in. You know, and what causes arbitrage is uh, is dollar shortage. You know, um, if you're not able to supply the market with enough dollars, um, the market here being the banks. You know, and the other day we saw that the um, the CBN has uh, approved that the BDCs will come back and uh, giving them limits of what to do. You know, all of that trying to just uh, <clears throat> ensure that everybody plays. Um, at a certain level uh, um, that encourages um, uh, um, the exchange rates to unite. But it, 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 is, it is doing one thing, but, um, but the, on the other side, you have the trust issues that people have always had. Mm. Um, <clears throat> if I have money, <clears throat> sorry, sorry about that, mm -hmm. if I have money and I want to exchange it, Will I want to go to the banks um, to exchange it, knowing that um, there's a possibility that um, the banks may not have um, the dollars that I need or that I may not get the rate uh, that I want to get it um, at the black market? You know, so there's still the black market uh, influence that is driving a lot of all, the, all of these transactions. Um, so and that's like I said, is, is a function of the trust. That, that those who have the dollars have in the market. Um, the manufacturers continue not uh, being able to assess um, and the dollars, you know, because they need it to go and uh, buy uh, uh, um, to, to get supplies. And many of them are eager to, you know, buy at any rate. You know, so um, whether you're selling to them at 900 Naira, whether you're selling to them at uh, 980, you know, but they just want to be sure that you have enough dollars that they need require to import um, some of the things that they need to um, produce their, their goods, you know, uh, um, and many of the banks don't have it. So uh, um, what's the point of them going to the banks so that there will be a limit to how much they can get than going to the black market? where it seems like there's, a, there's enough of uh, the supply that they are looking for, you know, so that's what's causing it. And when you tend towards the, um, the black market, of course, the black market will have to make a margin um, from, from what it is that, uh, that you're taking from them. And w w the extent of that mar margin will depend on how much you are sourcing from them, you know, so that's, that's what's been affecting the market. Again, it boils down to it is not, it is not a, a, a job the CBN alone can, can achieve. Um, good enough, we now have ministers. You know, um, you will expect that um, all of them will begin to pull their weight. All of them. I know there are some people who have marked out some critical sectors to say these are the sectors that need to um, uh, um, be focused on. But I think that every ministry every minister needs to be on top of their game and there needs to be some collaborations at at every level to ensure that everyone is productive 
And we are not, this is not a period to wait for, say, in the next uh, 100 days or whatever um, before you start, uh, we start seeing results. This is a period where we want to see results in the next one month, mm. you know, and that would depend on what you are doing as a minister, how you're able to coordinate, how you're able to um, implement existing policies, because it, it might be impossible for them to um, create new policies right now. You know, but they can go back and look at some of the old policies that have been made by previous ministers um, that have been in that position and create uh, uh, and try to maybe implement some of those um, policies that they know that are friendly to the market. Some of those policies that they know that will encourage um, trade activities in their in, in their ministries. You know, so everybody has to be on board in order to increase productivity in the economy. That way, it will reflect on the books of the CBN. You know, um, the, the, there's only a limit to which what to what the CBN can do. They can't continue pumping money into the economy, even if they print and uh, uh, more more naira. It will not ensure that there will be dollars um, in the market. So it's it becomes a um, a challenge that should be addressed immediately by those who have been appointed as ministers to do that. What would you say, Frank, should be the realistic exchange rate for the Naira? At this point, uh, I don't know. Um, I, I, can, I can answer that question with a straight face um, because um, the floating has sort of uh, distorted the, um, the market. And um, unless, unless we address issues around export, um, I go back to export because that's, that's for me like... Um, where we need to address to get in foreign direct um, investment. When you get in foreign direct investment, then uh, um, you can you you can con uh, you, you can start to address some of these issues. Again, um, I'm also thinking that Nigeria could have also leveraged the BRICS um, summit. Um, I see that Saudi Arabia. I see that some of the countries are beginning to um, look towards the BRICS. You know, and why but Nigeria is why not part of it. <laughs> exactly. So why am I talking about that? Is that look at the kind of uh, policies that they're looking at? They are trying to reduce dependence on the dollar, you know, mm -hmm. and try and start using trading with their local currencies. Imagine what that would do for a country like Nigeria, mm -hmm. you know, where instead of uh, um, killing ourselves over how much dollar we don't have. We can then start using our naira to trade with other currencies. You know, that for me, like, is like the, the lowest hanging fruit right now mm. that Nigeria can leverage. Go to the BRICS, bury your shame. What if it is that uh, that that's the politics between Nigeria, and maybe South Africa? You know, both of them can work together um, at this point to be part of that group and. By so doing, we start seeing our our naira strengthening. Um, people can uh, uh, people can then can start looking towards coming into the country and trading with the local naira and trading with every other um, uh, um, currency that are under the BRICS um, arrangement. You know, without having to worry, do we do we need to exchange it in dollars before we make our payments and all that? Look at China. Look at um, Russia is there. You have uh, India there. You have Brazil there. You even have South Africa. You know, we have a lot of trade with South Africa, mm -hmm. you know. So it is, it is actually a very good opportunity for Nigeria to leverage and strengthen the Naira. It's, it's just not always about looking at what the dollar is doing. Uh, no, no. Uh, so uh, tie, tying ourselves to, to the dollar is actually not doing us very great favors right now. And what I mean is that um, whatever IMF tells us, whatever the World Bank tells us, that's what we're going to do because these guys are, 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 are tilted towards the, um, toward, um, the West, you know, and of course they will expect that we should always um, use the dollar for every transaction that we're doing and all that. But if we sort of um, start getting our relationship right on the other side as well, you know, we, we can balance some of these things, and then ease of these pressures that we are um, currently facing. Why is Nigeria missing at the BRICS? I, I, 
I can't say I know exactly why. Um, I, I don't know if it's a thing of pride. I don't know if it's a thing of, uh, I don't know why we should even be proud in the first place because uh, we are at the base level. We are at the level where um, it's, like, it's like a beggar or somebody who is down. There's no other place for you to go. It's is, is either you're reaching out to somebody to pull you up, you know. Um, so it, whatever it is, I, I, um, I don't think it's necessary right now for them to even consider whatever it is. It is, um, hey guys, how do I become a part of you in the in the most in the latest I can? You know, um, I, I um, they have a scheduled next year for um, the new members to be um, to be included. But I, I know that those new members that have been, um, indicated interest um, will have some arrangement for them. You know, with, with the new policies that has been uh, uh, um, mapped out, mapped out by the BRICS. You know, so um, they can start to trade even before becoming, um, even becoming uh, um, formally members of uh, the BRICS. You know, so I, I think it is it is critical for Nigeria to start thinking towards that that angle. How do we start? trading with our local currency. Mm -hmm. It is what Africa actually needs at this moment. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, um, think about the fact that if you want to uh, um, go to Kenya, for instance, you want to use the Naira, you can use it there because um, you first of all have to go and uh, change it with the dollar before somebody will give you um, the shilling. And it doesn't help our local businesses. At all. You know? uh, and I, I think every African country should actually be thinking, how do we um, uh, um, trade between each other and not have any encumbrance with the dollar. It, leave the dollar where it's supposed to be. If you want to go to the West and trade with them, then you can start thinking about how do we use a dollar. But when you're in Africa, dollar should, shouldn't be a problem. But it continues to be even with the um, um, Africa Free Trade, uh, uh, Africa Free Trade uh, um, uh, and policy in place. Uh, we haven't gotten it right. We are still suspicious of each other. We um, we're not uh, um, even moving um, closer to each other. To to travel to South Africa, you, you, you require a visa. To travel to some African countries, you require a visa. All of those encumbrances is what is limiting the continent from moving forward, and also limiting a giant like Nigeria, like as it as it likes to call itself. You know, but. It needs Nigeria needs to be the one now to make the first um, the first step towards other African countries to say let's do this because it has become critical not just for them alone because it, in our it is that it is it is now in our own national interest that we start trading with our local currencies. I think that will bring us the the um, FDI that we're looking for. You know, when we start, imagine a period when we start having different local currencies, you know, and we can then denominate um, trade in those, in, in those uh, local um, currencies. It also means that our businesses from here can, can be free to trade in Kenya, can be free to trade in South Africa, can be free to trade in any country that they choose to. And, tr and money would not be the issue, that they don't have dollar would not be the issue. They can just walk in there, exchange their Naira with the um, local currency there and make a trade. So uh, I, I think it's, it is possible and I think it is urgent and I think it's something that the government should critically look into and try to be a part of. Okay, Frank, just before you go, what's your take on this revelation by JP Morgan that our foreign reserve may have dropped from $37 billion that it was when President Olusegun, former President Olusegun Obasanjo left Office to three point seven billion dollars. Oh, it's it's absolutely important because I I saw the rebuttal by the CBN, you know, um, saying in effect that JP Morgan was trying to just uh, be uh, uh, ridiculous or maybe cause trouble or something. But I didn't also see them say that JP Morgan was lying. Mm -hmm. um, what they said was that. Um, JP Morgan, or that um, the money that they have or that they are owing is still, um, say, um, the, um, they're supposed to pay, say, in 2027, you know, that you cannot come now and say that they are, that you minus the money 
uh, from 2027, you have to wait for Nigeria to get to 2027 before you find out whether Nigeria can pay or not pay. So you cannot uh, minus the money now and say this is the balance of that what Nigeria has. That as far as they're concerned, that uh, Nigeria has if Nigeria has 20 billion dollars, that's what Nigeria has. You can't say that Nigeria has less because Nigeria is owing um, different people and have different uh, commitment that it is uh, um, owing. But I, I think that um, anybody who has borrowed money before knows that um, if you have not paid that debt, um, the money that you have is not your money. Um, it's, you are effectively, of course, you are effectively... Um, <laughs> Holding all that people's money. money. <laughs> exactly. So... Um, all right, Frank. Uh, what if, <laughs> Time will not allow us to dig deeper because we just have to wrap it up here. But thank you so much. It's been so amazing listening to you, as always, very enriching. Frank, thank, thank you. you. All right. All right, Frank Eliana, technology and media editor, Business Day Newspaper, has been my guest on the second hot topic. Well, thank you so much for your time on The Breakfast today and throughout the week. On behalf of myself and the crew, on behalf of the team, Anyamgo, I say thank you again. Do join us next week for another episode of and series of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa.